The F-22 Raptors F-119 engine was built around a single question. How do you create enormous power while staying invisible? The United States needed propulsion capable of pushing a fighter to supercruise while keeping noise and heat signatures buried inside the airframe. Everything about the F-119 flows from this principle. Nothing compromises stealth. Russia's Su-57 moved in a completely different direction. The AL-41F1 was designed to serve multiple combat environments simultaneously. High-altitude interception combined with low-altitude maneuvering. Quick bursts of thrust paired with compatibility with existing manufacturing infrastructure. It evolved from the AL-31 family used on the Su-27, which meant balancing thrust and maintenance simplicity with affordability. Even the Su-57's future power plant, the Azdeli 30, follows this flexible philosophy. This fundamental split in vision sets up the entire comparison. One system aims for invisible precision, the other pursues powerful versatility. Today, we're examining how these different philosophies shaped three of the world's most advanced military aircraft, the F-22 Raptor, the Su-57 Felon, and the B-21 Raider. Each represents a distinct approach to propulsion, and understanding these differences reveals how nations think about air combat at the highest levels. F-22 versus Su-57. Core architecture. The F-119 is a low-bypass turbofan with a bypass ratio of 0.3. That number might seem insignificant, but it's entirely intentional. Lower bypass means hotter exhaust and higher thrust per unit of air. Yet in the F-119, it also reduces exhaust diameter and aids radar and infrared control. The engine features a three-stage integrally bladed fan along with advanced cooling for turbine blades. These components work together creating smooth pressure transitions at high altitude and during super cruise flight. The AL-41 F1 is also a low bypass turbofan, but its ratio sits closer to 0.6. That detail alone tells a story. Higher bypass flow increases mass airflow and allows high thrust without relying solely on turbine temperature. It also provides better fuel economy at subsonic speeds. The AL-41 F1 uses a four-stage fan, nine-stage compressor, and feeds a large afterburner section derived from earlier flanker designs. Inside the F-119, fan blades are designed for quiet efficiency. Variable inlet guide vanes regulate airflow before it reaches the compressor. The compressor itself maintains high pressure ratios without sudden surges. Every stage reduces radar reflections and controls temperature distribution. The AL-41 F1 fan is shaped for high mass flow. Russia prioritized volume of air over cross-sectional stealth. Its compressor stages are durable and simple to manufacture, optimized for rapid acceleration and deceleration. This explains why the Su-57 can transition from military thrust to afterburner so quickly. Its responsiveness is essential for the aircraft's close-range maneuvering philosophy. Combustion and thermal management. The F-119's combustor uses advanced cooling channels and precise fuel spray patterns to maintain uniform temperature. The hotter a turbine runs, the more power it produces, but the Raptor cannot afford uneven heat distribution because it exposes structural weaknesses and increases infrared signature. Engineers found a balance where the engine stays hot enough for performance, yet cool enough for stealth requirements. The AL-41 F1 combustor focuses on high energy output. Its temperature management accepts wider thermal variation and prioritizes thrust over tight infrared control. This gives it more short-term punch. Russian engines traditionally accept higher thermal stress in exchange for high thrust during demanding maneuvers. The AL-41F1's turbine blades use a mix of single crystal and directionally solidified materials. However, there's no publicly available data proving shorter turbine blade lifespan compared to the F-119. When the F-22 supercruises, the F-119 must maintain stable temperature distribution for several minutes continuously. The engine uses complex internal cooling, including air bled from the compressor and fuel-based heat exchangers. That cooling keeps turbine blades intact and prevents thermal spikes that could appear on infrared sensors. The AL-41F1's higher bypass ratio increases drag inside the inlet, and the legacy compressor design limits how long the engine can stay near maximum temperature. While the Soyuz 57 can achieve supersonic flight without afterburner under certain conditions, its ability to sustain supercruise for extended periods isn't well documented and is generally considered more demanding than in the F-22. Thrust vectoring and agility. Both fighters use thrust vectoring, but their goals differ fundamentally. 
The F-119's nozzle can deflect up to 20 degrees vertically. It's a two-dimensional nozzle designed to keep radar reflections predictable. The rectangular exit also helps manage exhaust plume shape and lower infrared output. Vectoring in the F-22 supports controlled post-stall maneuvers, but only within ranges that maintain stealth geometry. The AL-41F1 uses round nozzles with full multi-axis deflection, typically within 15 degrees on each engine. They can deflect independently, allowing the SU-57 to rotate in dramatic ways. These nozzles are easier to manufacture and give the felon extreme agility at low speeds. But this choice reveals a compromise. Round nozzles increase radar cross-section and infrared exposure. Russia accepted these penalties because they wanted maneuverability for dogfighting and missile evasion. The F-22's inlets are built for stability at high speeds. They use serpentine ducts to hide the compressor face from radar. The geometry slows and stabilizes incoming air. If airflow becomes turbulent, the engine could surge during supercruise. This is why the Raptor's intakes are fixed and carefully shaped. The Su-57 uses variable geometry inlet ramps. These ramps manage airflow during high angles of attack, ensuring the AL-41F1 receives sufficient air during sudden maneuvers. They're less optimized for radar reduction, but excellent for airflow flexibility. These inlet differences explain why the Felon can perform extreme maneuvers without starving the engine, while the Raptor maintains stable supersonic speed for extended periods. Fuel systems and cooling. Inside the F-22, fuel acts as a thermal sponge. Before reaching the combustor, fuel circulates through heat exchangers connected to avionics and hydraulic systems. This keeps internal temperatures, thrust vectoring, and agility. Both fighters use thrust vectoring, but their goals differ fundamentally. The F-119's nozzle can deflect up to 20 degrees vertically. It's a two-dimensional nozzle designed to keep radar reflections predictable. The rectangular exit also helps manage exhaust plume shape and lower infrared output. Vectoring in the F-22 supports controlled post-stall maneuvers, but only within ranges that maintain stealth geometry. The AL-41F1 uses round nozzles with full multi-axis deflection, typically within 15 degrees on each engine. They can deflect independently, allowing the SU-57 to rotate in dramatic ways. These nozzles are easier to manufacture and give the Felon extreme agility at low speeds. But this choice reveals a compromise. Round nozzles increase radar cross-section and infrared exposure. Russia accepted these penalties because they wanted maneuverability for dogfighting and missile evasion. The F-22's inlets are built for stability at high speeds. They use serpentine ducts to hide the compressor face from radar. The geometry slows and stabilizes incoming air. If airflow becomes turbulent, the engine could surge during supercruise. This is why the Raptor's intakes are fixed and carefully shaped. The Su-57 uses variable geometry inlet ramps. These ramps manage airflow during high angles of attack, ensuring the AL-41F1 receives sufficient air during sudden maneuvers. They're less optimized for radar reduction, but excellent for airflow flexibility. These inlet differences explain why the Felon can perform extreme maneuvers without starving the engine, while the Raptor maintains stable supersonic speed for extended periods. Fuel systems and cooling. Inside the F-22, fuel acts as a thermal sponge. Before reaching the combustor, fuel circulates through heat exchangers connected to avionics and hydraulic systems. This keeps internal temperatures low and reduces thermal spikes near the nozzle. The F-119 depends on this system to maintain both stealth and reliability. The Su-57's fuel system follows typical Russian design with multiple tanks spread throughout the fuselage and wings. Its setup focuses on delivering fuel quickly to the afterburner and keeping flow stable during high-angle maneuvers. Enter the B-21 Raider. The B-21 Raider was designed for a world where long-range strike missions must survive dense integrated air defense networks. Since almost everything about the B-21 remains classified, what we know is based on educated analysis and official statements. Every design choice points toward achieving extremely low radar signature while maintaining intercontinental range and payload capacity without compromising stealth. Its engines were designed to make the aircraft vanish. That meant deeply buried inlet ducts and thermal signatures that must remain below detection thresholds. The F-22 was built during a different strategic period. Its role was seizing air superiority from enemy fighters and outrunning every threat. The F-119 engines were designed for that singular purpose, extreme thrust and the ability to cruise at supersonic speed without afterburners. Both aircraft are fifth-generation platforms but the demands placed on their engines couldn't be more different. The F-22 carries two Pratt 
and Whitney F-119 engines, each delivering roughly 35,000 pounds of thrust with afterburner. This gives the Raptor something almost no other fighter possesses, super cruise near Mach 1.8. It can stay supersonic without relying on fuel-hungry afterburners. The B-21 takes the opposite path. It's powered by two non-afterburning engines, whose exact model remains classified. Current defense analysis consensus suggests they're likely part of the PW-9000 family, influenced by adaptive cycle research such as the XA-100 program. If true, these engines prioritize thermal control and stealth integration above raw thrust output. The Raider will never super cruise or fight within visual range. Its engines are built for endurance and invisibility. Adaptive cycle advantages. The B-21's exact engine model remains formally undisclosed, but public contracting data in official program statements point toward a new derivative of Pratt & Whitney's PW-9000 family. The goal was creating a core that can switch modes between high thrust and high efficiency conditions. For a bomber, efficiency mode matters most. By expanding airflow pathways and adjusting internal pressure ratios, adaptive cycle engines can reduce fuel consumption significantly compared to legacy turbofan designs. That translates into fewer refueling points and the ability to operate deeper inside enemy airspace without tanker support. These advantages aren't trivial. Range directly affects mission survivability. The B-21's engine also needed to be far quieter across multiple signatures. The Raider's S-shaped intake ducts hide the compressor face, while the blended exhaust diffuses heat into surrounding air. These choices reduce thermal signature and make infrared tracking far more difficult. Unlike the F-22, the B-21 doesn't use thrust vectoring, afterburners, or high bypass ratios designed for speed. Instead, it uses a moderate bypass ratio tuned for stealth and cooling. The F-22's thermal signature is shaped by the need for speed. Even with stealth measures, its exhaust temperatures are far higher than the B-21's because the engine is designed for thrust output. During super cruise, the F-119's turbine stages operate at extremely high temperatures. The B-21, conversely, treats heat as a liability. Every degree of excess temperature risks detection by modern infrared search and track systems. This forced Northrop Grumman to bury the engine deep inside the fuselage and stretch the exhaust path to allow cooling before gases exit the trailing edge of the wing. Materials and intake design, the F-119 engine relies on cutting-edge alloys and coatings to withstand extreme conditions. High-performance metallic alloys, titanium, and advanced ceramic coatings line the turbine and compressor sections to endure the intense heat and stress of super cruise and afterburning operation. The B-21's engine utilizes materials engineered primarily for low thermal emission and stealth. Early reports suggest it likely employs ceramic matrix composites in its core, materials that allow higher operating temperatures and greater thermal efficiency than traditional metals. The engine also uses lightweight carbon fiber composites in fan blades and casings, reducing weight and improving resistance to fatigue during long-range missions. The F-22's intake is designed for agility, its fixed geometry inlets use ramps to manage supersonic airflow without relying on complex variable surfaces. This design balances stealth, weight, and high Mach efficiency. At high angles of attack, the intakes still feed stable airflow to the F-119 engines. The B-21's intakes are completely different. They're blended and flush with the upper surface of the wing. They capture airflow with minimal radar reflection, then bend it into an S-shaped duct that hides the engine face. This geometry restricts maximum airflow and limits top speed, but the trade-off is worthwhile because it prevents radar return spikes. Operational Philosophy The F-119 reacts quickly to throttle movements, allowing pilots to shift from idle to afterburner in seconds. That responsiveness helps during missile evasion maneuvers and steep climbs. The engine's fan and compressor stages are balanced around rapid pressure transitions. The B-21's engine is expected to prioritize smooth and predictable throttle changes. Abrupt power shifts create pressure signatures and infrared spikes that could compromise stealth. Its mission profile involves long, steady cruise segments at high subsonic speed. The Raider doesn't need to fight its way out because it avoids detection entirely. The F-22's engines are complex and require specialized maintenance crews. Sustainment of the F-119 has been cited in Air Force reports as labor-intensive but necessary to maintain the Raptor's super cruise and maneuvering capability. The B-21 aims to reverse that trend. Northrop Grumman has repeatedly emphasized maintainability as a design priority. 
The buried engines and modular components suggest the Raider's power plants are designed for rapid servicing without exposing sensitive surfaces. This reduces maintenance hours per flight hour, a key improvement over older bombers. The F-22's engines have high reliability, but their role exposes them to dynamic stress loads like rapid altitude changes and high G pulls. These factors shape inspection intervals and replacement timelines. The B-21's engines operate within narrower RPM envelopes and gentler thermal cycles and are expected to have longer service lives. If the Raider uses an adaptive cycle derivative, component fatigue is spread across multiple operating modes, which helps reduce wear. Three philosophies, one lesson. The F-119 shows what happens when you push fighter propulsion to the limit. Enormous thrust combined with unmatched agility. The AL-41 F-1 demonstrates a different path, emphasizing versatility and raw maneuvering power over stealth discipline. And the B-21's engine shows what happens when stealth and survivability outranks speed entirely. Together, these aircraft mark transitions between eras. The F-22 represents the peak of air dominance engineering. The Su-57 embodies Russia's commitment to supermaneuverability and multi-role flexibility. The B-21 signals the beginning of a new generation of low-observable, high-endurance aircraft. Each design philosophy reflects national strategic priorities, industrial capabilities, and threat assessments. The United States prioritized stealth and supercruise for the F-22, accepting complexity and cost. Russia prioritized agility and adaptability for the Su-57, accepting some stealth compromises. And for the B-21, America prioritized survivability and range above all else, creating an engine optimized for missions that never require fighting. Efficiency is becoming increasingly crucial in modern aircraft design. Future fighters might prioritize low emission, high endurance engines similar to bombers in some respects. But agility and speed will likely continue driving fighter engine design for the foreseeable future because the missions are fundamentally different. The real lesson isn't that one approach is superior, it's that engine design must serve the mission. And these three aircraft with their radically different propulsion systems prove that lesson definitively. If you enjoyed this breakdown of fighter and bomber engine philosophy, let us know in the comments which aspect you found most interesting. And make sure you're subscribed for more technical analysis of the aircraft shaping modern military aviation. Thanks for watching.